Hi there, this is Veronica. Today we'll be making something different. We're going to turn a PDF file into a leather bound booklet. Here we have our PDF file open in Adobe Acrobat. And the first thing we need to do is to print them out into a booklet format. So here we hit the print button. And for this building part, we're just going to set it to actual size and print it on both sides with the flip on short edge. Then we're going to go to the properties. Here we're going to do the settings for the printer. As you can see here, this is now a building window. This is the specific driver for my printer. The printer I use is Brother Color Printer. And if you use other printers, there will be different settings. Um, but here I'm just going to demonstrate the one I use. So to get the driver, you'll go to the Brother website and put in the product model. Then we will download the driver over here and we will need to download the full software package. Go through on the installation, then you will need to go to the settings to disconnect the printer and reconnect it. And once you've done all that, you come back to the printing window, then the properties will be open with the driver. Here we're going to set the booklet models here. And open up the settings. We're going to decide the direction of the book opens and also make them into sets. And the numbers here is for how many sheets of paper you're making one signature. We'll talk about what signature is later. Now, I usually do six, but this number is actually um, depending on how many pages you have for your PDF file. And that will be all the settings we need to print out the booklet nicely. Before you hit that print button, make sure you add two or four blank pages before the first page and also the last page. I'll explain it in more details later. And that was something I forgot to do, but it was definitely necessary. And of course, there's a way to work around it, but it won't be ideal. Now we have all our papers printed. We're going to turn them into folio first. So this is a sheet of paper. And once you fold it in half, it turns into a folio. Here I have a bone fold to help crease out the edge. And this will be an important part to make sure that the folded line is perfectly flat. And for every six sheets of paper that we turn into folio, we're going to stack them on top of each other. And every six sheets is become a set, which is what we set on the printer properties. And the stack of portfolios is called a signature. So here we have our first signature. As you can see that because we set the printers to do so, we have a signature with all the pages that are aligned. Then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of the papers. On top of the first page, I fold a blank sheet of paper in half and put it on top of the first page. Now we have all the signatures ready. We're going to clamp them into two boards. Here I'm just using IKEA bookshelf. Clamp them in between two boards and make sure that the spine of the signatures are aligned. Next, we're going to mark the line where we're going to punch the holes. I put one and a half centimeters on both sides and divide the rest in three. But don't make the same mistake I made here. You, you actually need an even number for the total of the lines here. So I had to add another line later, which makes them kind of uneven. Make sure that you draw across the spine and hit every signature.
This is a cork board. Now I'm going to punch the holes with an awl on top of the mark that we made earlier. So you just simply open up the signature and turn it into a stack of papers and then punch the holes for each signature. Then we'll be going into the sewing part. The length of the thread is about 7 times of the length of the papers. So definitely do a bit more than you think. We'll start it with our first signature. As I mentioned earlier, I use a blank piece of paper to make up for the mistake I made when I printed out the papers. So this piece of paper is actually my first signature, which is not ideal, but well, it will work. <laughs> On one end of the thread, I run it through the needle and have the needle run from the inside of the signature to the outside. Then remove the needle and leave a thread outside the signature. And the other end of the thread is tied to the needle. Then we'll run the needle back and forth through the holes we punched earlier. And this is why we need an even number for the holes that we punched because you will want the thread to be outside at the last stitch. Tie up the thread and flip it onto the left side. And then we're going to do run the needle from the outside in the next signature. Then we'll run the needle through both signatures, run it back and forth until the last stitch. The last stitch will be going on the outside. It will be not be going through the previous signature. Now the thread is on the outside. Now we're going to tie that knot with the thread that we left out for our first stitch. Flip the whole book to the left. Then we're going to continue the sewing process to the to the next signature. You will be doing the same thing. Feed the needle through from the outside to the inside of the next signature. Then sew it back and forth with the previous signature.
And for the last hole, it will be going outside of the signature. And here we're going to tie a knot with the previous connection between the previous two signatures. We're going to run the needle right under the connecting part and you will form a loop that we will run the needle through. Then we'll just move on for the next signature. On our final signature, we're going to finish it up with another knot, like the previous ones. Then we'll run the needles back and forth of the last signature to finish the sewing. And it would be ideal if you have an odd number of signatures so that the last stitch wouldn't be on the inside. But what we'll do is what we can do. We're going to tie a knot on the inside to feed the needle through the last hole again. For the last part, we're going to tie two knots at the end of the signature. Remove the needle and we will leave the threads on both ends like that. Now let's clamp them in between boards again. We're going to have the spine sticks out a little bit as we're going to apply glue on the spine. The glue I use is a very thick white glue. So comparing to the normal white glue, this is very thick and it's not liquided at all. It's a bit difficult to apply, but it will also help to prevent the papers from getting wet and be wrinkling. Apply a generous amount of white glue on the spine and also gluing the end of the threads towards the center of the spine. And if you want to add a ribbon for the bookmark, and this is the time that you attach it onto the spine.
On top of the spine, I'm going to attach a piece of cheesecloth. Glue your bookmark before adding the cheesecloth. And one end of the ribbon should be underneath the cheesecloth. On top of the cheesecloth, I add another layer of white glue. Wait until everything is dried and add another layer of white glue on top. Now everything dries up again, we can remove the boards for now. We're going to add the end page on both ends. For the end page, I use cardstock paper. This is about 110 pound. I will fold that in half and this is going to sandwich on the first page and that's why it was important to have your first page to be blank I use double-sided tape right along the edge and white glue at the middle part. The white glue is the same white glue I use for the spine. It's the thick white glue that will prevent the papers from wrinkling. Glue down half of the end paper and make sure that they are perfectly aligned. Then we'll do the second part. Finish the other side in the same way. Then we'll clamp that in between the boards while they dry. Moving on, we're going to make the leather bound. Here I use a scrap piece of leather. And on the back of the leather, I'm going to draw the guideline of the book. And on each side, I use this tool. I don't know the name of, but, but I add an extra width on each side for folding the edge in. Then we will cut along those lines. I purposefully left one side of the leather uncut just to prevent that I need more leather on one end. Now we have the outside of the leather cut. 
Next, we're going to cut the leather for the spine. At the corner of the spine, we're going to cut in triangle shape. This will allow the leather to fold in nicer. Then we're going to glue the edge for the spine in first. I use leather contact glue and use a hammer to shape the leather. Same thing on the other side of the edge. Here I also cut the corners off to make it easier to fold in the edge. Then we'll be gluing the end paper to the leather. After gluing the end paper down, we're going to fold in the leather and fold the edge on top of the end paper. Here I use a hammer to help shaping the leather. And we'll leave the corners for last. To shape the corner, I use an O to fold in the center line of the edge and slowly fold in the other parts.
I clamped it in between boards to make them glue nicer. I didn't do a very good job on the corners here, so I'm going to try to make it better for the front cover. Same thing for the other cover, we're going to glue the end paper onto the leather. Then we will trim off the excess leather, and then fold in the edge the same way as we did on the other side. I also clamp them in between boards to make them glue down nicely. And I did a much better job for the front part. Moving on, I'm going to trim the book block. And because we are stacking papers on top of each other, the opening of the book is not going to be flat. So here I clamp the book block in between two metal rulers and use a razor blade to try to smooth down and make the opening of the book to be smooth and flat. Now the opening of the book is all flat and I actually cheated, I used a sending machine to do this part. I still don't really like the look of the inside of the cover, so I'm going to use a piece of fabric to cover it up. And I use the Japanese style fabric for the liner of the cover. Cut them into size and sew up both sides. And we'll just simply attach the liner to the inside of the cover. I use double sided tape on four sides and white glue on the middle.
and after gluing them all down, I'm going to use leather contact glue to attach the fabric to the leather on the edges. And finally, I'm going to add this foil for the cover. Something like this is very important for a book because it shows the front and also the orientation of the book. I also drew this paper crayon to face the direction where the book opens. And the leather on this front cover has a curved line, which is just a natural character for this type of leather. And I'm just going to embrace that and put my crown on top of that line to make it look like the flying route of the paper crown. Attach the foil on and now we have finished the book. This is a rather special project and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.